If you're a beginner editor, there's a very tiny but simple improvement that has to be made in order for you to progress. And it's having your videos look like they were done professionally. And something that most of the time goes hand in hand with professionalism is smoothness. Something that will run subconsciously through people's minds as they're watching your content is how nice it feels to watch. This may sound like an odd concept at first, but let me explain. When someone is watching something that you've edited, if the editing is quite subtle, nothing too crazy going on, if it's an average consumer of content, they will not even notice what's going on. Whereas if the editing's not smooth, they will notice because something in their head has said that something is off and doesn't look nice, making them want to watch the video less. And if you're editing your own videos or even more importantly, somebody else's, if a viewer doesn't want to watch the video that you have edited because of the way that you have edited it, that's no good. How do we avoid this and begin the journey of making the videos we produce smooth and pleasing to watch? The foundation for all of this is curves. The way I'm gonna structure this video is I'm gonna show you examples of different ways you can use curves and hopefully when you try it yourself, you can experiment on your own. The first example I'm gonna be showing is moving stuff around. Let's use me as an example. Starting from the middle, I want myself to slide up, move left, and then right. This is how proper beginners would usually do it. Simply going into the motion section, placing the keyframes on where you want them to go, and just letting it play, and it looks bad. Crap. How do we go from that absolute hover show to this nice, smooth animation? First things first, we're gonna completely ignore the motion tab. We're gonna to go to our effects panel and search for the transform effect. We're gonna get that and then drag it onto our graphic. The first thing we're gonna do before we move anything is we're gonna uncheck this and set the shutter angle to 180. This just gives it a nice motion blur to everything that we do. Before putting your keyframes in place, keep in mind Premiere is a bit sometimes. So in between each keyframe, I'm gonna be cutting it so it doesn't do this stupid bug. Uh, this goes for when you're doing any animation, you click the stopwatch first to toggle the animation. I'm gonna have him start down here. That's him moving up, left, and right. Yeah, that, that looks awful. Right. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click this little drop down menu here. And there's two options for this. You can either click on the keyframe and then find this little ball at the end of this line and start moving around and that activates the curves. Or you can select the two keyframes, right click and then make it Bezier. I don't know how to say that. I think it's Bezier. So now your keyframes look like this and when you click, there's a ball attached to a little line. You wanna go ahead and find the last keyframe and then move that around. Now the way the curves work, I think it's really easy to get a hang of it once you know that the higher the peak is the faster something is moving so as we can see here it's going to be slow for a tiny tiny bit and then it's going to go really fast and then slow down and that's what that looks like and that looks perfect so it takes a lot of messing around but if we go to the other one drop down menu click start moving these bad boys around if i wanted it to be slow move quite quick in the middle i'd make it look something like this Nice, and then let's say I want to do something similar to that, but like a bit more, a uh, bit stronger. Boom! And it's that simple, just know that the higher the peak is, the quicker it's gonna move. And that's how easy it is. Look at how much better that looks. That is literally 10 times better than what you had originally. And that's for movement on screen. We've gone from absolute linear to nice and smooth, which is way, way more appealing to the eyes of your viewers. Now we're moving on to pop-ups. By pop-ups, I mean things like this or that. Just popping up on the screen at any moment. I'm gonna remake the two animations that I've just shown you. So we've got the little carrot here. And uh, sometimes Premiere is Premiere. And if you have an image that's smaller than the aspect ratio, Ratio of the full video, it's just gonna change the anchor point for some reason. So, with a lot of graphics, once I've added the shadow and stuff, I like to just nest it just to be safe. So, we're gonna add the transform tool again. Oh, and if you didn't save it as a preset, because of how often you're gonna be using this, when you go to save the preset, I just leave it as transform preset, but put a dot at the start of it so that it's at the very top of your effects panel. So, we've got the transform, we've got our carrot ready, we're gonna make it go from small to big. So, let's say we start on like here. We're gonna have it end about this size and then it's gonna fade out. So same thing as last time, get the drop down menu. Now this looks a little bit different. Your values are gonna be different to mine, but what we're gonna wanna find here is to have this point and this hidden point down here level. The way we're gonna do that is look at what the value is in our final keyframe and place it into this top section here. That's now up at the top. Then we find the first one. And now it's level. You're gonna select both your keyframes, right click and press Bezier again. I don't know if I'm saying that right. So again, you can experiment. You can just see whatever's really high is gonna move fast and whatever's quite low is gonna move slowly. The way I'm gonna make this is go really fast at the start and then slow on the way out. Drag it along. And then I wanna pull this one up there. But sometimes Premiere does this thing where 
you just can't. But the fix for this is to just move it a few frames and then do your edit there. So I want to have it jump high at the start, super quick, and then really drops off. And that's what that looks like. And then I'm going to add a cross dissolve by clicking the end and pressing Control D. What the hell I've just made a pop up? Pen with some sound effect. That is a really smooth animation. And if you want it somewhere else on the screen, just simply move the position and it'll do the zoom from wherever you placed it. This next one's more simple. It's the same thing with the nesting and whatever. We're going to add our transform preset that we previously made. I'm going to go back to the position thing. Now I want this to shoot up and then fade out. So we're going to start down here. Ding. You got to imagine how long it is. You got to be a little bit creative. Boom, where it's going to finish, drop down menu. And same thing with the scale. I want to have this peak really high at the start. Then I'm going to add my fade by clicking the end, control D. Boom, and then you've got a pop up. And if you want to move this, you're going to have to use the motion tab because we've already used position in our transform. And those are the two very basic pop-ups that you're going to be using in videos. Not limited to Minecraft objects, you can do this with anything. Do you want to talk to me over a video call? I am in this incredible Discord server full of aspiring video editors looking to turn it from a hobby into a full-on career. Once a week, I am hosting a big fat live call and I can speak to all of you guys. You can ask questions in chat. You can even join the call yourself and speak to me. It's all in this huge, huge Discord server which provides so much more value than I could ever express. And anyone who joins using my link, I'm going to give you a DM and just have a chat with you because I appreciate the support so, so much. Please use my link. I really hope I see you lot on a call with me. Yes, I will be wearing the mask the whole time. Now we're going to be using scales for zooms, especially in gaming videos. Just zooming it in on something happens like three times a minute. The amount of times I'll just do a zoom in onto the screen or a face cam to make something just a little bit funnier or I just think it looks good is absurd. So I'm going to show you how to do the basic zoom zoom in and out with curves as well as zooming in onto specific things okay so now we're onto zooms i'm using a client's video here what is this what is this he says what is this what is this so we're gonna do a zoom in and then a zoom out so most people would just add the transform effect to the video personally i much much prefer using an adjustment layer because if you have graphics on the screen that you want to zoom in on as well as the video it's just easier so the way to do that is you press this little paper icon here adjustment layer make sure it's the settings of the sequence and then when it's made you just drag it on and now we add our transform preset so i'm gonna have it go from 100 to let's say 130 and then back out to 100 again same as last time, select them all, busier, and then I want it to zoom in when he goes this. So I've put my cursor in place of where he says that so I can see it on here. And I'm going to have the very peak of the zoom go in when he says this. And then we're going to have it zoom out kind of softly on the way out. What is this? What is this? And that's it, that's smooth, it just enhances the video a little bit. Now, let's say you've got a zoom and you want to zoom it on something specific. So he's just chilling here and I'm going to have him zoom in on this fella in the corner. Before we start doing any zooms, we're going to click the anchor point here and this little blue circle will appear on the screen. So you move the anchor point and there's a hidden one underneath it and you want to make sure that once you've moved this anchor point, the one underneath it is where you want them to zoom in. So I want them to zoom in on this guy, so I'm going to position the second one to be about here. And as you can see, this looks stupid. So what we do is we grab our first value, we copy, and then paste into the other value, and then do the same thing on the other side. Now when we zoom in, it zooms in 10. It's not always perfect and it's going to take a bit of tweaking, but once you get used to moving the anchor point and then copying, pasting, it's simple. And here's another tip I forgot to mention, is uh, instead of just writing the value, you can actually drag these along. I found it's actually quicker for me when I've put in a new value to just like move it, because when you get familiar with curves and you understand how they work, you get quite an eye for it. So I've just moved this up and then I'm going to have it go like that. I can tell it's going to be a tiny bit slow and then peak and then fall off. And that's what that looks like. And then if you want to zoom out, you just do the same thing I said a minute ago. Now that you've learned all these things, you've got the basics for enhancing your videos instantly. As I said, this is going to take you from looking like an absolute beginner to someone who looks like they professionally edit. 